And while it's while the recording button is happening, I'll just post a couple of slides here so that you can just get familiar with the the, um, the team today. So we have it looks like we have a very again a very good cross section of drives represented on the call. Um, I didn't know how it might be whether we'd have you know um, a change in the authenticate sort of um, variance today, but it's about the same as it's been most weeks. So um, you know that's no real change. Um, I'll try and cover both ends as well, so we learn more about the authenticate drive as well as the avoid authenticate drive as we go through today as well. All right, um, I've got a couple of other things to show you. So before we kick into gear, I would just once again, as good protocol for all of us, just do a self check on where are we on a scale of zero to 10. We call this your peak performance indicator. And I think it's just a really great thing as you're getting ready for the day. It, it, it might even be affected by, you know, how you start your day, the clothes you wear, um, what you're going to do as your very first meeting or activity. These are the things that can have a big influence on how we get through our day. And to me, it, it's very possible to live 10 out of 10 and certainly eight out of 10 and above. And if you're going to lead and be effective, the, the mark you want to set yourself is at least an eight out of 10 or else you're not really casting the shadow to engage and influence and um, stimulate your followership as, as what you need to be doing as a leader. So we all have, we're all human. We all have days where we can have setbacks and get pulled off out of stride, like you can see here with these arrows off to the left and to the right. Um, but the more self-aware you are, and particularly with ID, the more you're aware of what your true self is and strategies to get back on track or stay on track with um, who you really are, then the more that line can be, if not perfectly straight, it, it's not a wildly sort of oscillating um, line. It can be something that's maybe just a little curvy. Eight out of 10 is definitely possible. And I would just say to you, expect that of yourself and, um, and try and create a world where other people can live like that as well. And it all is a better place. So just check yourself and say, well, what is my number today? And then as we go through today, listen for strategies that you might be able to get because um, you're somewhere on that authenticate drive. And there may well be something regarding what we're about to cover that could be an insight that will help you get to an even higher number. Has anyone got anything I want to share just before we kick off rel relative to their number, where they're at, or anything about this you want to cover? Okay, I'm going to keep moving. So today, I thought I'd put this slide up first just to, just to capture um, some key points about the, I, the actual Authenticate drive, and then we'll unpack it in more detail. But I put it together this way particularly to sort of try and show the opposite directions of each of the, um, the attributes here. So the authenticate drive is all about making things real and having it be transparent, upfront, out in the open. And so it's the drive to be much more explicit. And it's the, if it's the drive to be explicit, then in understanding the avoid authenticate drive, then that's all about being more implicit. And we'll talk about what that means as we unpack it, you know, um, through the next hour. If the authenticate drive is all about being practical, and useful and the doing side, it's the avoid authenticate drive that's much more theoretic, theoretical and idealistic. If it's the authenticate drive to be visible and transparent and more, you know, what you see is what you get, the avoid authenticate drive is more what's under the surface, what's submerged. So it's the deeper things underneath regarding the feelings, the perceptions, and, you know, timing things in terms of diplomacy, either when you say it or how you say it, so that you, you respect and honor the feelings all the perceptions that other people might then have. If the authenticators are literal with what they say, the avoid authenticators are more, um, words are just directional, that words are a part of the communication, but so is silence, so are feelings, you know, so are body language. And so the, expressing that the whole lot, we, I'll show you in a minute, we actually use, you know, uh, sorry, this, um, this picture of the, the tree, and then the iceberg to sort of represent maybe just graphically, this might help some people get a picture of um, the, the difference between the authenticate drive being what's above the surface on the iceberg and how much more there can be under, under the surface. Sometimes depending on where the water level is, there might be a lot under the surface, might be more than what's above the surface in terms of feelings, thoughts, ideals, perceptions, or it might be that it's mostly above the surface. Um, the only way you're going to know is, is to go scuba diving and have a look, which means, you know, get into the world of the person and understand what's really going on for them. I think the other one is the tree. You know, we're, we all can see what's above the surface, 
And because of, you know, our life experiences, we all know that a tree has a root system and there's something beneath the surface. Some trees are a lot more than others, but the avoid authenticate drive is all about what's underground, that, that deeper um, component of what makes the whole tree. If we, if we ask kids to draw a tree, they'd all draw the trunk, branches and leaves type thing. They wouldn't necessarily draw the roots, but as life goes on and we learn more about the tree, we sort of go, okay, there really is a root system that's not only maybe as big as the tree itself, but um, significant to the tree, like it is the tree, it can't survive, it can't be a tree without the root system. So all of that is there. And it's an authenticator has, has feelings and perceptions and everything as well. It comes down to what drives them. That's really the difference. All right, so today, like we've done in other weeks, I'll go through and unpack elements of the avoid authenticate drive. Let's just stop this screen. And, um, and ask questions and, and let you sort of contribute as well so that hopefully by the end of the hour, we've got a really good understanding of what, the, um, of what this drive means. Any questions so far? Okay, let me stop the screen so I can see you all. So I thought I'd start with the strengths of this drive. What are the strengths? And if it's all about being under the surface, you know, I'd say one of the first things is just connecting to people's feelings and their deeper thoughts. One of the ways you do that is to use the word really. For those of you who want to know how to connect to an avoid authenticator and tap into those strengths, just put the word really in front of whatever you're asking. Them. You know, how are you today is one question. You could say, how are you, how are you really feeling today? And if you ask with sincerity, it lands completely differently for an avoid authenticator. They feel like, first of all, they feel, that's the key word, they feel like you're really interested and that you really want to get to know them. And so you could ask anything, you know, about a concern, like what's their real concern? That word is almost like a key that gets into that under, underground area for an avoid authenticator. So their strength is actually seeing those perceptions, almost like, you know, reading what's not being said, reading the... Um, the vibe, I would call it. You know, if you walk into a room, you can all either feel the feelings, feel the energy, pick up on body language. You read what's not being said verbally and you factor that in. So just getting a feel on the group, the emotion in the room, um, the, the, you know, sensing the non-verbals is the real world of the avoid authenticate. It does, now, they can't prove it to you necessarily unless you start to unlock that with somebody. But even then, you can't always, out of respect for, you know, people's individual emotions and, and personal security, you can't always um, get that truth out in a public environment. People aren't necessarily going to share just because you've asked the question. And so the timing, the sensitivity, the diplomacy of that is what the avoid authenticates respect as well. So they may not even call out something, some of those incongruencies that they do see. There's times I could be in a room as a, you know, as a one in authenticate and I can detect somebody is uncomfortable but for me to call that out and put that on the table, I'm not going to do that because I can already sense that that would make them uncomfortable. And, you know, I'll deal with that more offline. I remember when I was first starting work, um, I was doing this course on communication and the employer said, don't communicate so that you're understood. Communicate so that you cannot possibly be misunderstood. And I, I didn't know my ID at the time, but I thought that was a really good instruction for someone like me and a place to my strengths because when I'm communicating, I'm, when I'm writing, say, an email or saying something, as the word's coming out my mouth, I'm already sensing how it's likely to land, how it's going to affect someone's feelings or how it might be perceived or missing, misperceived, and I'll change it so that it lands the way I'm intending it to land. And that doesn't mean that I can do it perfectly all the time. I'm just saying what the driver is, you know, that, that, that you're looking for how it's going to land. And even though what I say could be literally it's correct um, and truthful, and to the point, if I sense that, yeah, but that could be misinterpreted and might land this way for somebody, I'll then change it up. And I've been watching for the last couple of days to find an example so I can show you. And I, I can't quite, I, I haven't seen one, but I might even see one in this call that I can show you. Um, the other point about this drive in terms of a strength is it's not the doing drive. The authenticator is the drive that wants to get in and do things themselves. Um, there's a certain fulfillment out of just personally making things happen. The avoid authenticate really wants to work through other people. 
or other things other than themselves. So the strength is the delegation, you know, the, the empowerment of a team. Thanks, Ian. I, have th I had this light fixed. It must just be the time of day. I can't get someone in here at six o'clock in the morning. I apologize for my light flashing. I, I had it fixed. There we go, better now. Hopefully it'll stay there. Um, yeah, achieving results through other people is the world of the Avoid Authenticator. And what's really interesting is some Avoid Authentic Authenticators will say, but I enjoyed this role for a while. You know, the first year or so I enjoyed it. And then, and then that's when it really started to get boring. It's like, yeah, because the first year, maybe you were learning all about it. And maybe as a verifier, you were learning it. And therefore, it was like you're in more of a study learning mode, or maybe as an improviser, it was brand new and as exciting, and you're doing it people with you're doing it with people who are really positive. Um, but once it became just the doing, so you've learnt it, and now it's just a case of doing. So let's say you're doing massage, and mass, which is a very physical thing to do, and when you were learning all about it, that was interesting for you because it's intellectually stimulating. But once you've learned it all and you're just massaging people for the sake of massaging, you've got to get through an hour of massage, for example, that is really unfulfilling because it's just the doing. So the avoid authenticate would want to look, well, how else can I leverage this time? Leverage is one of the key attributes. And what leverage means is it's not multitasking. Multitasking means exactly that, that you're doing several tasks at the same time. While I'm on a phone call with you, I might be texting somebody, I might be typing an email, that's multitasking. Leveraging means you're doing the one thing, but while you're doing the one thing, there's multiple applications to it. So for example, I'm doing this webinar with you right now for your benefit. I might also be using it as a means to innovate new material. Then we're recording it, so we're creating product that goes up on our website, and I've got somebody in mind that wants to really learn about or avoid authenticate, and rather than me have a call with them, Separately, I can just give them this and say, here, have a, have a listen to this. This will help you learn it. And that's, that's the avoid of, you know, the, the concept of leveraging, doing the one thing, but it's got these multiple applications. And the, it's both the strength of an avoid authenticate to see those multiple applications to make it sort of have those different um, uses, but it's also a vulnerability. Every talent has a vulnerability because be, being, uh, you might start with something that could be contained and now you've blown it up bigger than the ocean with all these other applications. And it's like, whoa, 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 just like bring this thing back to reality and we just want to solve this problem. We don't need to make it bigger than Ben-Hur, you know? Now, if you are in that drive, then you're going to relate to both directions of what I'm saying. So it's five, uh, for those of you who are still, it means there's no drive through that instinct you'll be driven from another drive. You, you will have at least one, maybe two or even three stronger drives elsewhere than say your five in Authenticate in this case. So you'll relate to things I'm saying about the use Authenticate direction and the avoid Authenticate direction if you're a five. And you'll go either way, depending on what else drives it. So take, for example, if you were a completer, I haven't talked about a completer yet, and you're into harmony, maybe to keep the peace, you won't say anything explicit. You'll just bite your tongue and hold on to it as an avoid authenticator might do because you don't want to offend anybody. But that's coming from the, the drive for harmony, which is a completer. There's other times when in order to make a point and, and maybe help progress things along, which is a completer wants to see progress, they'll be very direct and upfront and speak quite openly and put you know their real thoughts on the table, not because they're trying to be the explicit, direct, literal authenticator, they're being direct and literal because they're trying to push things along and get progress as a completer. So when you are a five, you've, you've got the willingness to go either direction. It'll be driven by one of your other stronger drives. Any questions or comments from people about what I'm covering so far? Paul, Paul there is one thing you, you mentioned about the fact that you uh, don't, don't get excited with just the doing it has to be more and you're really excited at the concept at the beginning those of us who are working with avoid authenticates when they're at the beginning of a thing or the idea of it they're all in there and when it comes to actually delivering and rolling it out their interest can wane and you can almost like what what did i do wrong why are they why are they not here anymore kind of a thing and right. they they might want to pay attention to how that's being perceived the fact that 
oh man, we've already got this. It's just cookie cutting now. Come on, you know. And everyone else is going, dude, there's work to do here. So you, you just raised the right work, Greg, is to talk about perception. You know, perception is the driver. So feelings and perceptions are the driver words for the avoid authenticate. So if you started complaining to me about the way uh, of what I was doing, my behavior, it probably wouldn't land for me as much. But if you told me how it was being perceived by people, now you've got my attention. You know, so things like my personal brand really matter to me. As an avoid authenticate, and I'll, I was going to talk about this a little later, but I'll raise it now. One of the, you know, the, one of the voices in the, in the head of an avoid authenticator is worrying what everyone else thinks about them. And it's frankly, it's, it's like a, almost a paranoia. The stronger the drive, the more it like preoccupies you with what's everyone thinking about me. And I will say, as a, as a younger person, less self-aware, um, everything I did was based on what everyone else thought about me, whether it was the car I drove, the clothes I wore, um, whether, I was, whether I was at a certain event or not. In, my, in the back of my mind, maybe the front of my mind was always, what do other people think about me? And it was, you know, at times it's a positive and it's, it's nice to be conscious of those things, but so often it leads to a real insecurity. And it's... Um, a real burden for an avoid authenticate. Like it's, it's almost like a, a, a thing inside you, you don't know how to deal with. And then one day I had this light bulb that changed my whole concern about that area. And uh, I, I want to share with you what it was so that it hopefully resonates with and helps other avoid authenticates as well. Or those of you who have people around you who are at avoid authenticate. But I remember one time realizing, and this will sound so simple, the person that I most need to worry about how, how I'm being perceived by is myself. And that was huge for me. So what do I think about me? And once I realized that if there's things that I don't like about me, then clean them up, Paul. You know, if, it's, if I'm sloppy in a certain area or I'm worried about some other relationship and I'm wondering what they think about it, then go deal with it. But once I got to a point of, I actually like what I think about me, you know, and if, and if there's an issue, I'll... I'll deal with it and clean that up, but I'm not going to then worry about what everyone else thinks about me. Um, I could say, you know, in all confidence, that was liberating for me. And I sort of fi figure if I'm a one in authenticate and I was able to do that, um, hopefully that's a strategy that could help a lot of other people who would be a void authenticate as well. But, but concern yourself more with what you think about yourself. And if there's something that's troubling you about it, then go clean that up and, and don't worry from there. I also heard a story about this guy that owed some money one time and he was beside himself with the debt that he had to pay and worried about what was going to happen to him when he couldn't meet the deadline the next day. And he went and told his friend all about this stress. And his friend said, stay here, I'll fix it. And he went over to the neighbor who, who, to whom he owed the money. And he said, are you, John, you know, the neighbor, my friend, Fred owes you this money. Yeah, that's right. So here's the deal. Fred doesn't have the money. He won't be able to repay you. You're not going to get your money and, and just walked away. And, and he came back to the, the guy who was in debt and he said, what'd you do that for? And he said, because now it's his problem. Now he's worrying about how he's going to get paid. You don't have to worry about that anymore, you know? And it was just more shifting that burden. So I would just say to you, think more about what, what you think of yourself and clean that up if there's any issue there with yourself or with somebody else. But it's probably, when I thought about the burden of the drive, um, there were probably two things that stood out to me. One was the insecurity that comes from worrying about what everyone else thinks about you. And honestly, people think about themselves, and I don't mean this in a critical way, but mostly we think about ourselves and what's going on in our own world. So they say 95% of the time. So if people are gonna spend any time thinking about you, they're gonna fit you and everyone else into their 5%. Doesn't leave a lot of time to be thinking about you. So, I mean, just holding on to some of those principles certainly has helped me not be burdened by that issue. Um, and the second real burden is we just think everything is obvious because, because to us, if you think of the iceberg metaphor, we don't know it's an iceberg. We don't know that we're underground. We, we think everyone can see what we see. And so we often don't explain things and walk people through the steps because we just think they're obvious. It's not that we don't join the dots. We don't realize the dots aren't even joined. We just think that those pieces are, you know, a goes with B, goes with C, goes with D. Um, so we just talk about E because surely everyone can see B, C and D. And 
it's not, you know, to someone who's an authenticator, they're just seeing what's out front, what's real, what's in the open, what's above the surface. And I think, you know, for me, I would say that again is one of the real burdens of that drive is the number of times you either get told later that you weren't transparent or, you know, um, people are confused because you haven't explained, you, haven't explained. you don't realise what you haven't explained. Paul, it's Gail here. Um, I'm too on Authenticate and um, people say I don't suffer fools gladly because to me it's so blindingly obvious and when someone asks me what I think is a silly question, I so have to bite my tongue because I, it's obvious. Why on earth are they asking? It's quite, yeah, so I so identify with that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, if I come back to um, the bird, the, not the burdens, the vulnerabilities, talk about a couple of the vulnerabilities. So the, the thing to keep in mind for those of you who are avoid authenticate is our words are not, we don't mean them to be taken literally. We mean them to be just a directional indication of what we're trying to convey. But so is our body language. So is the pause between the sentences. You know, so is whether we have eye contact. There's so much more that makes up the overall communication. But the risk is what we would typically call verbal contracts, that when you say you're going to do something a certain way, the authenticators hear it exactly as you say it. And they then expect you to deliver, as you said. It could be as simple as me saying, I will get this done for you this afternoon. And then instead of me doing it, I delegate it to somebody else. Being a board authenticator, I delegate it, and I'm thinking, well, it's getting done, same thing. But it's not the same thing because I didn't do it. And it would just be explicit to call the authenticator and say, hey, just so you know, it is going to get done. I've actually passed to this person and they'll take care of it for you. You know, just, just so that everything's out in the open. And when I work with the people in my life, the, the authenticators, and the stronger they are, I, I'm often surprised where they explain things like, in myself, I'm thinking, oh, okay, that's really nice you told me. You didn't need to tell me that. Like, I was okay that I didn't know that it wasn't going to be you. It was someone else. But I, there's still something that lands nicely that they cared enough to say that. And it's just their need to have everything so there's no possible misunderstanding. But I think it's something to be really careful of as an avoid authenticator, that whether it's, you know, you have almost learned to look at the exact words you're using and say, okay, I said, oh, I'm going to do it in 20 minutes. I didn't really mean 20 minutes. I meant soon. I said I was going to do it. I didn't really mean me. I meant, you know, it's going to get done. So what do you really mean? And then say that. And if it's going to be different, be respectful of the authenticators and then try and clean that up. Hey, Paul, can't, can't even other down authenticates, avoid authenticates. They, they too can get confused if they're on a different perspective or a perception of things. Absolutely. They too can come away going, but you said Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I remember, so uh, one of the differences with the authenticate drive, you know, and I, I just call out this difference. I remember when Mitch, my son was at school and he was getting into trouble with the principal, you know, and um, one day I said to him, so Mitch, did you get in trouble with the principal today? And he goes, no dad. And I found out later that he got sent to the office of the assistant principal. So I thought he was being a real little smarty, you know, so I pulled him aside and said, Mitch, you lied to me this morning. I, he said, no, I didn't, Dad. I said, yeah, I asked you if you got into trouble. He said, no. You asked me if I got sent to the principal's office, and I didn't. I got sent to the assistant principal's office. He didn't ask that question, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> and he wasn't saying it to be smart. He was just saying that he answered exactly what I asked, and if I had thought to ask a different question, he would have given me a different answer. But he didn't think to answer it like that because I didn't ask. And that, that's just a simple, funny example of what happens with, the, the gap between the avoid authenticate and the authenticate. And in my family with the kids, like th my three boys are all authenticators. So we have this little joke that it's an authenticated truth or an avoid authenticated truth. You know, so if, if you want the real truth, you've got to make sure you ask the exact question from an authenticator because they'll say to me all the time, well, it wasn't a lie, dad, but it just wasn't the total truth. You know what I'm like? So make sure that the perception you live, leave me with is the same as the real truth. So the perception I'm getting is that you weren't in trouble. And, and they've, they've learned that there is a difference. They, they're not stupid. They understand what perception means. And so if they can see there's a bigger truth 
um, then they will talk to that truth so that it's, well, it's really more truthful, they're, but they're speaking to the perception as well as the literal words. Okay, let's move along to motivating yourself. If you're an avoid authenticator, what, what gets an avoid authenticator motivated? So it's when you feel that people really want to get to the core of who, like that depth, when people want to dive in to the iceberg, you know, and so the word really, like, tell me how you really feel about that or what's really on your mind. You're instantly motivated by hearing that word really. And I find it quite interesting because we talk about the authenticate drive as the drive to make it real. And yet it's the word really that actually motivates the avoid authenticate. You know, I find that really interesting, <laughs> you know, just how that works, right? Um, so anyone that spends time getting into like what I would call a deep and meaningful conversation, that's, that's very engaging and, and um, you know, stimulating, motivating to an avoid authenticator, whatever we're going to talk about. So the deep and meaningful could be about me or you or people, but it could also be a deep and meaningful about strategy. Like where are we really taking the business? You know, what are we really going to do? What do we really want to achieve for an event? Say we're organizing an event at home. Okay, what do we really want to have this thing do? Like, okay, now we're talking, you know, rather than just planning tasks, which is like, okay, that's tasks. That's not, you know, that's just doing stuff. But if we get into how do we want people to feel? What's the experience we want people to have? You know, I see Greg laughing. Um, <laughs> you know, that's, that's what, that's the communication that, re that really starts to engage the avoid authenticate. Anything to do with the experience we want people to have, the feelings. You hear about now in business, people talking about a customer experience function. I mean, that is the world of the avoid authenticate. Now, it doesn't mean that they're the ones who should be leading it, I'm just saying, but that speaks to the, to the heart of the avoid authenticate drive. What's the experience? The, the, the customer might have got all the things you promised, but what was the experience? And how do we create that, secure that, expand that? That's all the world of the Avon Authenticate and what really motivates them. So things like net promoter scores for Avon Authenticates, that's a big driver because that's all about customer perception. And it's about not just the good feedback, but the bad feedback. I mean, net promoter scores are sort of one minus the other. And, you know, that's a real driver. So you can talk about having engagement scores in business like people are measuring engagement scores. To be honest, I, I don't know that engagement scores will last a whole lot longer in business, to be totally candid. Um, our better clients are moving away from them. They're just a bit, a bit of a yawn, to be honest. Like who wants their people engaged anyway? Like so often, regardless of whether the feedback is, is um, accurate, which I would debate whether it was, um, do you want people engaged or do you want them thriving? And I would much rather have a measure of people thriving and you're more likely to get avoid authenticate striving if you tie into things like employee net promoter scores and customer net promoter scores. Because that's all about the perception of the person. And perceptions and feelings are the drivers for the avoid authenticate drive. Hey, Paul, um, can I just ask a question? Yeah, just, just, on, just on the point of, of digging deep or deep diving on things, um, and this is purely going to play into my drive, and I know Greg will have a comment. If I... <laughs> If there are things that I'm really passionate about, like ID and other things, I love going deep. Like, you know, you can, you can, we'll go, I'll go deep every day of the week, but you, you put how to grow a lemon tree in front of me and, and going deep on that, I couldn't give a rat's. So how do you connect interest and passion to, to that want, willingness and wanting to go deep on things? Um, I, I if I've understood you correctly, I'd just ask the person, like, I would agree. I, if there's something that doesn't interest me, I don't necessarily want to go deep on it either. You know, I don't, I don't really have a big interest in how cars work and engines and, you know, all of that. And if there were a guy, bunch of guys standing around talking about the most intricate detail of engines, I'd probably walk away and go somewhere else where I could have a more real conversation, what a real conversation for me, you know, that was a deep and meaningful conversation. Um, so yeah, you, you have yeah. to have an interest in that area, but if it is an interest, then you want to go deep. If I may, yeah. Paul, I think what's driving that more is your seven grant. Your yes. grant, your seven decides what, what's relevant, what is a priority, what's a problem to solve, and then you, then you dive, right? And yeah. even with Paul, even though he's, eight, he's a one, 
with Paul's eight, the one doesn't choose stuff. It, it sort of, it decides how deep to go with something. So he needs his eight and his seven to decide where he's going to go with it. And then he puts his diving suit on. Yeah, it's interesting, right? I find myself fighting my seven. So there'll be things that I think to myself, I actually really need to learn this and go deep on it. <laughs> and then I'll be sitting there going, I've got no interest in it. I couldn't care less, but I need to actually learn it. And I, I just find it's almost like a constant struggle. Not, not, not constant, but I find mm -hmm. that happens regularly. Okay, um, the other thing I would say in terms of motivating that drive is if you can leverage, if you can find like, what else can I achieve by doing this? So it could be as simple as, you know, you've got to mow the lawn. I'm just making this up now. I've got to mow the lawn. I'm like, okay, what else can I achieve? Well, I could teach someone how, like I had someone, a young person, I could, okay, come in here and I'll show you how to mow the lawn. So mowing the lawn is incidental. Teaching them is really the more, more the driver. Or if I can do it as a challenge. So I wonder if I can get this thing done in like, how quickly can I'm going to actually, I'm going to, I'm going to time how long it takes me to mow the lawn and, you know, figure something else out at the same time. The minute there's another angle to it where I feel like I'm leveraging the experience, I'm already feel myself more motivated by it. So leveraging your time and leveraging the experience is another way to motivate them. Now, I will say you don't need to think all this stuff through to motivate and avoid authenticate. You could just ask them, how else could you leverage this? You don't even need to understand what the word meant. The avoid authenticator will, because it like speaks to their, to their driver. So they will then think of a way. And if they can't think of one, then they're going to struggle to get motivated. So maybe have a deeper, meaningful conversation with them about it. Maybe that will unpack something, you know? Um, but I will say to Grant's point, if it's not an area of interest, um, that might be a bigger struggle. But if, you know, if it's an area they know they've got to be motivated in, they'll probably find a way to either see a connection to leverage or to something deeper around, you know, an ideal or, or a, maybe a, a way it was going to be perceived that could really work. One of the, although I've talked about delegation, I do want to cover off that um, in a lot of our work with teams, the avoid authenticators are often perceived as not delegating. They're, they're the ones that can not necessarily be a bottleneck, but not delegating anywhere near as much as what they could. And I will tell you, if that's the case, if that's how somebody's being perceived, know that inside that person, there would be a lot of frustration as well. Typically, the reason they won't be delegating is to do with trust. And the trust will come from either, for example, the verified drive, that it's not going to get done to the right standard in their mind, that the people don't have this, this you know, the, the competency or the, the knowledge or experience to deliver to the standard that's required. So the, the verifier says, okay, well, I'll do it myself because I want to, as a verifier, I want to get it done right to that standard. But, but that avoid authenticate part of me is like a tug of war that's going on at the same time going, come on, come on, get out of this. You know, if it was an improviser, they might do it themselves because they want it done really fast. And there's a, they want a wow factor. So they want, they're trying to sort of create, or they don't even know what they want. They're creating as they go, but they still want to try and delegate that if they can, but it's really hard to delegate the creative process. So there can be a tension around delegation, even though you've got the drive to delegate because of the other drives. Nirvana is when you have got someone around you that can do it to the right standard and you can really let go of it and you know it's going to happen, you know, or if you're an improviser, it's going to get done um, as quickly or as impressively as you, what you want. And you can then honor the delegation need of that avoid authenticate drive. That's huge. Paul, um, talking about trust is sometimes it's that you don't trust people to get it done to what you consider is ideal. So what often helps me in that situation is I step back and go, how am I going to define ideal? Is it ideal that I'm the one doing it to get it to there? Or is it more ideal to have four people doing different things and getting it to 80%? So redefining the definition of ideal, I find can really help with trust and delegation in an avoid authenticate. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's a really good um, add-in. Thanks, JB. Okay. I'm, I'm going to mention one of the genius elements, what I would think of as the genius side, but I've got two here to mention as I've tried to do with previous weeks, you know, what, one that I might consider white belt and one that might be a little more finessed at a black belt level. And I would say the one that stands out to me, 
and I'm open to people's input here on this, but the one that stands out to me really is, is the ability to read the vibe in the room. You know, there's times when I, I would say as a one in authenticate, I could almost tell you what people are actually thinking and feeling. It's not just I can tell that someone's upset or concerned. I can probably go so far as to tell you what it is. Um, and, you know, I guess there are, depending on how, what your intensity of the drive is, that will vary. But I, I think it'd be fair to say those of you who are avoid authenticate on this call, your ability to just read, if I think of it like a psychic ability, like you can't prove it, it just is what comes to you. But in the same way that you could say to a verifier, you know, where do you get those questions from that you ask? Or to an improviser, where do you get those ideas from? To an avoid authenticator, you'd say, well, where, how, where do you get that from that you're reading the room? How did you know that person was thinking that and feeling that or concerned about that? It just comes to you from the vibration or the energy, I guess, of what's what you're picking up in the room. It's not the same as just, you don't just get it from nothing. You know, I've often thought, can I, if I met someone, do I get like this instant sense of knowing that the avoid authentic, avoid verifier gets? It's not that I actually need a vibe. I need to experience something. I've got to, there's got to be a something to read. Um, and that's the difference to me between the avoid authenticate and the avoid verify is that an avoid verify can have an instantaneous knowing, an instantaneous reaction. That's the opposite to the verify having to process something. The avoid authenticate needs to experience the person or the situation to, to pick up a vibe. Now the experience might still be very quick. I could walk into a room and if I was expecting it to be really positive and I walked in, it was really flat. I'd be like, Whoa, something's going on here. And then I'll need to just like marinate in it for a bit to sort of get a feel for it. I go, okay, I got a feel now what's going on, you know? Um, but you've got to experience the vibration, I guess, to then read the vibe. To those of you who are avoid authenticate, do you do you feel like that's a real a real talent that you that you bring? Mm. I see Laurie nodding. What what I would what I would call out to you is it's not it's not where the authenticators play, yet they really value that from us. And and we have to bring it to the table. So when it comes to things like the culture of an organization. You know, culture is one of the things that whilst, it, whilst it's, um, it is about what the tangible things and what people say, what they do, the traditions, the rituals that, that a, a business or an environment, a group would practice. When you actually read the energy of that, you know, there's, that's the other half of the equation in terms of the iceberg of what's really going on. Because a lot of times those things are, are, there's the culture that we aspire to have. And then there's the real culture that's occurring where particularly when there's a, you know, negative things going on, but people don't always feel that they can surface those issues. And the avoid authenticates are the ones who can read a lot of that and delicately, sensitively get it out on the table so that together all of us, including authenticators, can maybe do something about it. Firstly, understand it, and then begin a journey of doing something about it. But there's a real role there for the avoid authenticators to be custodians of the full culture, not just the aspired culture, but the, maybe the underground culture that's occurring as well that could be either toxic or certainly a, an antibody to the, the more positive culture that everyone really would like to see. Paul, oh. um, I would say to your answer your question from my perspective, it's a gift and a curse. It does have a shadow side to it because once you're uncomfortable, a lot of people can't sense or see what you're seeing and it's very hard sometimes to to get that across well and to get it across without throwing someone under the bus and dishonoring their feelings and and all of that i get it and i guess that's the um that's the the skill you know with with finessing that skill finding the time and the process to maybe work with someone behind the scenes and get them to the point where you know i'll often say to somebody privately it would be really good if we can discuss this publicly, um, like in, in the team, for example. Here's what we're going to say. We, are you willing to come along with this discussion? And if they're forewarned, you know, well, in my case, typically I can help get a person comfortable to be able to have this discussion quite openly. And that that's a game changer in, in a team. I mean, when people feel like something that they've been previously 
wanting to say but didn't feel safe to say, and now we can start having that conversation. I mean, that's that's the game changer that occurs in a team. Anybody else as an avoid authenticator want to comment on their drive? Well, Paul, it's Ian. I was just going to make, Greg made a good call out in the chat just about that it's often not what's not said that's the message, not what's actually said. So we pay, um, as an avoid authenticator, I think we often pay more attention to what's not said or what's perceived than to what is. Yes. Yes, it is a good call. Yes, in my experience, yes, in my experience. Um, the rubber <clears throat> the rubber really hits the road. I've, you know, we've all been in uh, joint ventures and business deals, etc., which eventually culminate in a shareholders' agreement or some heads of agreement or proposal. And that's always a transitional phase when that's always a transitional phase when. Sorry, I'll just turn this down. That's a bit of a transition where uh, a a transition where uh, everybody sees it all in writing, and, right. then, and then there's always a big surprise. Hey, Doug, we're getting we're getting feedback. Hey, we're getting feedback. Hmm. Yeah, Doug, we're getting yeah. All right, let's let's move right. on. Let's, let's move on and talk about causes. Of talk stress. about causes of stress. Why am I getting feedback? Why am I getting feedback? Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow. Okay, could, could everyone hey, just could, go on mute? I think we can get in from someone else's line. Gail's unmuted. Okay, so when it comes to causes of stress for the avoid authenticate, um, I'd say there's a few things that stand out. The first is just not being understood. You know, when you feel like people don't really get you, they don't understand where you're really coming from, and they're making judgments about things you've said or things you've done as to who you are as a person, but they don't really know where you are coming from and what you really stand for, and they haven't, under, you know, whether it's that they haven't taken time or they just haven't under, come to understand the depth of where you're, who you are and where you're coming from, that is a massive source of stress. It's, it's okay that people don't understand you. That, that's not the issue. It's when they make judgments about you as if they did understand you and there's a gap between the conclusion they're drawing and who you really are. That gap is the just drives and avoid authenticator nuts because our drive is to actually close that gap. So there's no gap between the depth and the truth. Like if, if anything, I've often felt as an avoid authenticate, I stand more for the truth than the strongest authenticator. But I stand for the real truth, like the whole truth of what's above and beneath the surface. I can see and hear what's above the surface, but I also stand for what's below the surface. And it's honoring all of the feelings, the philosophies, the ideals, all of that. And so when there's a gap between perception and reality, my drive is to close that gap. I know that for me, pretenses actually didn't put that down but that's definitely a big deal i cannot stand pretenses just can't stand them and if i feel that somebody is you know placating a situation or um being somehow cosmetic about you know whatever they're saying and it's not the truth i i cannot stand it and i will call it out and i'll try and do it in the most diplomatic and sensitive way but one way or another, we've got to close that gap between what I know the truth to be and what is actually occurring. That, that closing the gap is the driver of the avoid authenticate. And so when you feel that somebody is making a judgment about you as to who you are, and there's a gap between what they're saying versus who you know yourself to be, that really is, and obviously you want to do something about it because you want to close the gap. But if you can't close the gap, that's the source of stress. What, what helps is to be able to say to someone, can we please have a conversation? I feel there's a real gap and I want to help close that gap. And if someone then says, of course, I'm really interested to do that, that's like mother's milk. You know, that's beautiful that someone cares and wants to close that gap. If you felt that you either can't or the person's not interested, 
I mean, for me, it would almost be like writing the person off as, in, obviously in the nicest way, as um, at the same way the an authenticator might write off someone who lies to them. For me, if I had someone that wasn't willing to want to understand the depth, they wouldn't really be in my closest circle. Say, Paul, let me ask a question. So you mentioned that as a strong avoid authenticator, you can see both sides, the side of the authenticator and the avoid. How would that compare to a five in authenticate like myself? Well, well, I think you'd probably see both sides too, Tad. I, I think the difference is it's about the drive as opposed to like you, and I'm, I'm assuming here that I'd see some of the things. I don't think I see things as clearly as an authenticator would see them because my focus where I put my energy is on the avoid authenticate side. So if we're looking at the iceberg, I'm looking mostly at what's under the surface, not what's above the surface. So I might have a quick glance at what's above, but I'm not understanding that as much as I'm distracted, if you like, by what's beneath the surface. Um, and that's why I can, I can recall conversations where the strong authenticates in my life have said, Paul, can we just stay with reality here? You know, like, this is where we need to focus right now. This is the real issue, not all the other stuff. So even if I saw it, I don't, that's not where I put my focus. You would probably do a better job at, at a balanced view and putting your focus sort of more equally in both directions, Ted. Greg, as, what's your perspective? Thanks. Thanks. An eight, what's your perspective or, or Alona? As, do, you, do you see, how would you answer Ted's question? <laughs> You're not going to like my answer. Um, I think that the authenticate, the avoid authenticates think they think, think they know where we're coming from. Um, but from, a, from the perspective of what it means, not what it's doing. So you can, you'll go off on the intention behind it in the meeting, whereas we're going, no, dude, but you know, your car's on my foot. Yeah, yeah, but my car's a new car, you know. And so, <laughs> and I think where we meet, I just typed that where we meet is when you picking up that dissonance from what was stated and what is showing up, the real culture, and we picking up our bullshit detectors going, oh, dude, this isn't real. That's when we really do brilliant work together. That to me is when black belt happens. Because we bring both sides of that drive and we meet them together and the world changes. And for you and I, that's literally happened. Right. Oh, well, there's a mic drop on it. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> no, just, just, let it, just create the space. I guess someone else wanted to say something. Okay, so let's move along. Another, another source of stress um, is uh, struggling to express ourselves in a way that truly conveys our thoughts and feelings. So even when we have the, the chance to share our truest thoughts and feelings, it doesn't mean we always can. And whether it's because we lack the words or we lack the confidence or we lack the time, but even when you, as, a, as a, another person, whether you're authenticator or avoid authenticate, create the space for me to share my truest thoughts and feelings, I'm saying me being just not me, but avoid authenticate, doesn't mean I can do justice to my truest heart, my deepest feelings. And there's times when I've heard the words come out of my mouth to express myself and I'm like, no, that doesn't really do it. And I'm still stuck to convey the truth of what I'm really thinking and feeling. And that is really frustrating. And there's, I often am in, in awe of the authenticators can use one word, one sentence, one picture expression, and it's so crystal clear what they mean or where they're, where they're feeling. And I'm like, God, I wish I could just come up with something that clear to explain the depth of what I'm about to, you know? And that is a, that is a source of frustration. I don't think of myself getting stressed too often, but I can get frustrated. And if I was, you know, if I unpacked it, a lot of it's because I can struggle to express in a safe and constructive way, or even a way that sounds clear enough, what I'm truly thinking and feeling. Paul, can I just jump in there? I was going to say one of the things that I find myself is, it's almost like you've got the ideal in your head, but when it comes out your mouth, it's no longer ideal. And, and it's, it's, it's that frustration. It's like that. It, it's, it's so perfect in your mind, but as soon as it's spoken, it's no longer, <laughs> no longer perfect. And that's for me, that's one of my biggest frustrations. 
well, I'd have well, to tap into my green friends to help me on that. <laughs> Ian, it's a, it's a great point, but I'd actually take it a step further, which is there's a certain magic about the fact that it's hidden. So, for example, if I did something really nice for somebody, and say, for example, you gave a card to somebody and they read the card and they liked the words, but there was so much more to giving them that card than what they actually realised because they just read the card. You know, if at the minute I've got to explain all the other things that were behind it, it's lost its magic now. Because taking it from the implicit to the explicit loses a certain, yeah, the magic, the magic of the moment. So there's a, whilst it's, go Elena. So how do we help you not lose the magic of the moment, but be able to express yourself in a way that feels like, oh, okay, we're here, I see you, I understand the depth of what you're saying, without simplifying it or minimizing it. I think, I think by the way, you could react. I'm dealing with this off the cuff. If you reacted, I, I remember one time actually having this conversation with Greg, and we were talking about something, I can't remember the exact example, Greg, but it was like someone you know, say, for example, a, a dad was late to a son's basketball game and, you know, it really all that happened was the person's late to the basketball game. And I was sort of going, oh, my God, you know, he's only got, that's the second time that's happened now. That kid's going to feel like his father never comes to a basketball game. You know, by the time he gets to 21, he's going to remember that the kids, that his dad was never there. And Greg was like, oh, my God, you know, like you've taken that, like he wasn't debating what I was saying, but he was just back at the basketball game and I'm like extrapolated out to all these other things, you know? And um, I've always remembered that example, Greg, because, you know, of the, the, as a difference between what happens to the authenticate and avoid authenticate. And, um, but if you honor that by simply saying, like if taking the card example, if you then sort of said, wow, that means a lot to me. And, and you just dwelled on that for a little while, instead of just going, oh, wow, that means a lot, thank you. That's, that sounds, that's not honouring the significance of the feelings, you know. But if someone explains all the other things they've done behind the scenes and you sort of went, wow, I had no idea. Tell me more about that, you know. Like, that's really special that you felt like that. Has that, has that happened before? Or, you know, and they could dwell in that space, like stay underground with them, go under the surface and stay there. That probably helps a lot. And one, one of the things I'm learning, you know, I've been having this conversation with a really close friend of mine just recently. And as you share more like this, it sort of lowers the water level. And I'm finding authenticators can actually be really good at some of this feeling stuff. If they know, if they know that that's what, what matters to you because you're lowering the water level. By, by you explaining to them what matters to you, they can then play in that space. It's not like they don't have feelings or every human has feelings but it's what drives them. And they're driven more by the actions than the feelings. But if they know feelings are really important to you and they want to be useful and constructive and make a tangible difference and contribution, that you can do a great job of that. But you just needed to know that the water level was lower for that particular person. So I, I, like with all aspects of ID, people can't use it as a cop-out to say, well, you know, I'm not going to expect that of that person or I'm not going to expect it of myself because I don't have that drive. You can do it, you know, um, once you know that I, I'm, I'm experiencing that right now. When people become more aware of your feelings, they can do a beautiful job of honouring that side of the equation rather than not, not paying attention to that. I had a really practical example the other day. I, I had someone um, visiting my home and I um, left the garage door open so they could, it was raining. So they could drive in and I put my car out when it was dry, right? So they could drive in and they wouldn't get wet. And to them, it was really practical and they really appreciated it really practical that I'd done that, you know, it was a, a practical thing to do. And I'm like, oh, that was only like 5% of it. I mean, the 10% was, but how are you going to feel when you turn into the driveway and you can see that and then you feel like you've been welcomed and you come, like that was where I was coming from. The bit about staying dry was like minuscule. You know, it was more around how the person would feel. And that's what I'd say to you with the, the and, and as people understand that, I'm finding authenticators in my life are really much more aware of and attentive to the feelings. I even had the situation last night with my son when I did something I felt really bad about with one of my kids. 
um, divulge something I shouldn't have divulged um, type thing. It was just, it was a total accident and a mistake, misunderstanding. But um, Jace rang and said, Dad, how, how are you feeling about that? You know? And I'm like, wow. And Jace is a seven in Authenticate. And we talked about that for a bit. And I felt very tucked in by what he had to say because it was, was um, oh, yeah, he's on the call. I didn't realise. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> but it was very, um, you know, endearing to me because he was paying attention to my feelings. Hey, so, um, I I... Time. Let, me, let me talk about the black belt um, of the, the genius level of this drive. And I've had people say it to me before, and I never even understood what they meant, but it's creating the space, creating the safe space to basically lower the water level and allow everyone to talk at the truest, most vulnerable place. That is something that the authenticates, the avoid authenticates can do masterfully. If you are, you know, I'd say, first of all, be really aware of it. Um, and it means you take the agenda off you um, one of the best things you've ever taught me, Greg, about, you know, the agenda off. That's, you know, if the agenda's off you and you're focusing on the environment there, you can create the space that allows the most vulnerable conversations to occur. And it, um, it really is a noticeable um, difference that, you know, you make. But that's how to do that. Some said, well, how do you do that? This is why I put it in the genius category because there's no straight answer to that. It's almost like it's the world of the avoid authenticators. It could be everything you've done before the meeting itself or before the conversation. It could be things you're doing in the meeting. It could be body language you've used. It could be humor that you use. There's all sorts of components that you might draw on to create this safe space, but it really is um, <clears throat> a, 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 like a genius level talent of the avoid authenticate drive. You know, that, that makes a lot of sense. Just like if we think of someone who wants to use Authenticate, such as myself, I want to speak literally and candidly. And if that hurts you, that hurts to you. I'm, oftentimes, I'm not speaking about you. I'm speaking about what we're working on. And I don't mean any offense to the person who built that thing. I'm just saying, hey, I think thing X could be done better this way, that way, and the other way. And that might come off as rude and hurtful to other people. So someone who's driven to avoid that style of communication um, should be very good at mitigating that and creating a space where everyone can talk openly and freely and fostering that communication. Thanks, Nathan. Thank you. Okay, the last thing I'll share in the interest of time is what shows up when you do. So when you walk in without you doing anything, saying anything, just the shadow of you that walks in when you're in a void authenticate, <clears throat> what is that? I'd say... Hey, I, got, I got one quick question. How, how do you deal with question behind question? That is, um, understanding avoid authenticator or the things which I am going to talk, how do you handle with question behind question? I, I didn't understand your question, Pilani. I'm sorry. Uh, the question is like, let us say uh, I'm talking to uh, a wide authenticator. He's not answering what I am looking for, but he's answering something. But I wanted to understand the intent of him, like what he's really thinking without asking any questions. Like what is the real question he wanted to ask, but he's asking something else. That is not the real question. Uh, maybe. I'm happy to take it offline with you as well okay. to help you get the answer you need. It's probably, you're probably in the right direction, just, you know, staying with understanding his intent or finding out what he is really using that word really going on for him. Let me, I'll, I'll check in with you offline just to be respectful of everyone else's time. What I was going to say to you in terms of what shows up when you, when you do um, really, it's the deep and meaningful conversations you, you, you bring a, you know, there's a, a depth, that people are gonna sort of wanna, they're gonna feel open to sharing and opening up to you. So that sense of connection, uh, a care factor, the relationship, the relationship is what, you know, um, honoring that, nurturing that is what's gonna show up when you do, paying attention to the relationships as opposed to all the stuff around you. Um, that's if you're on. If you're not on, what shows up as the shadow side is probably insecurity and the agenda will be about you and one way or another, and you'll suck oxygen. So 
you know, I think it's really incumbent on an authenticator to be particularly self-aware, given of how deep that iceberg can be and how it's not so obvious to everybody else. It really means you need to show up present, um, ad your agenda off, and you're there for other people because otherwise your insecurity and the sucking oxygen comes through. And I, I can see where that's applied to me and other reward authenticates I know. And there are times where when you're on and you're truly there to give to others and you're present to them, the, the power of your care factor on the relationships and the deep and meaningful real conversations that occur as a result is just awesome. And you don't really have to do anything. You just make sure you show up in stride with your gender on everybody else and not worried about your own perceptions and then the rest unfolds. All right, guys, I know we're just over. Thank you so much for being on the call. Next week, we're going to start um, addressing the complete drive and you'll see this video posted up on our website later today. Thank you for being here today. Have a wonderful day or evening and we'll see you hopefully next week. Take care. Thanks, Paul.